If you want to paint emotion, you want to paint feeling, this is the place to be because that's what's going on here. Yeah, I want to paint this Appalachia scene. There's a, to me, there's a lot of, I don't want to say misery, but there's a lot of the economy's bad right now. And I think it's, it emotionally affects me. I think it shows my work and the paintings I'm doing. So I think I want to kind of concentrate on the life around here, life in this area, in our state, in the whole Appalachia region. The one that I had in the George show, which is the Friends of Fossilized Carbon, I was in a group that traveled to Logan, you know, look at the coal fields and talk to people in the industry, and it was so depressing. And when I came back, I just had this emotional charge that I, I had to do something related to that. Like most artists, you've probably painted 10,000 paintings in your head and maybe a thousand of them in your lifetime will get down on canvas if you're lucky. So I'm trying to take what pops into my head and immediately either take notes or sketch something down to leave myself a, a trail of thoughts. And then when I'm ready to get in front of the canvas to work something out, then I'll, I kind of can review back over those things and see what, what it is I thought about that day. So everything I do, whether it looks, whether people grasp it or not, I have some a concept behind the pieces when I get started. So I want to I want to have a visual connection between what's going on here and what's going on back here to, to highlight this area. For instance, I, the one I have on the, on my uh, easel now, I was just driving with my daughter to school and I, I saw a tree with these like vultures, just all sitting in the same tree. It just kind of connected with me that it kind of reflected um, my daughter's future and the things they're going to have to go through. It's kind of a, a dreary type thing of it. I'm always concerned about what the world's going to be like when they get to be an adult. I'm, I'm influenced a lot by Hopper and uh, Andrew Wyeth, but I came, we went to a show and we were uh, parked in a parking garage down in Charleston. And this is, uh, this is Hale Street. So the, the, all this activity was going on in Hale Street and it's just kinda made me think about how the, the city of Charleston, it, to me, there's not, it seems to be dying. And it just wanted to have this concept of, the name of this one's Ode to a Dying City, and have this lone figure here pointing to the heart of the, of, the, of the city. And there's some activity going there, but really the rest of it is kind of dead. My oldest daughter, Susanna, was asleep on the couch. And I, was just kind of... I find myself being drawn to more conceptual ideas and, and thoughts, and I, I think that's where I'm heading. It's important for me to, to have my paintings mean something. Um, your face is almost like a mask. You're still dreaming, and your face is a mask for your subconscious. The painting of my brother, for instance, I thought he was asleep. Well, you know, it looks that way to me because I knew that's what he was doing when I was painting him. But, you know, I wanted it to be dark and I wanted it to be some bright light kind of reflecting off him. Maybe he is contemplating. I think contemplation in green was the name I put to it. So I wanted people to have some, uh, I just don't want to have a painting of a person sleeping. I want them to think maybe they are thinking something deep and heavy. And, I want to leave a mark. I want, when I'm gone, I just want my relatives to have a piece of what I created. If I get it, if I get a name for that after I'm gone or while I'm here, then that's that's gravy on that. But you know, I just want to. I have something to say, and I like to say it. And I think when you do it in art, it it, it lives beyond you, and it'll be here hopefully for a couple hundred years afterwards. So.